What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video we're going to be working on my 60 series Land Cruiser. Um, as you would have seen in last week's video, I did mention a little bit about it and how I'll be doing some work to it. Um, today I'm going to be fitting some bigger shocks up front and some shackles. Um, so if I don't video it guys, I don't actually get to do it pretty much. So I work 40 hours a week um, and Saturdays and weekends pretty much my only day off. Um, so I'm going to be taking a little break on the camper today and just be doing this. So it's currently running a three, uh, two inch EFS lift kit. Um, it's got the anti-inversion shackles in it. Um, it has sagged over time in the front, just with the bull bar and the, the heavy winch in there. Um, so I'll be putting in the um, extended shackles that I did have in there previously before the lift kit. I'll put those in the front and I'll be upgrading the wrist uh, shocks in the future, but I just want to see how it sits at the moment. Um, just a bit about myself, I do love working on cars. Um, as some of you guys probably have seen on my stories on Instagram, um, I do post a bit there about what I do at work and that, so I, um, just a bit about me, I am a heavy diesel mechanic, um, I've done all that, I did go to uni for a bit and then um, I'm doing another apprenticeship now, but uh, that's all good fun, so uh, let's get stuck into it. Alright, so I just wanted to give you guys um, just a quick look at what I'm going to be putting in, I know this is a massive topic on the 60 Series Land Cruiser page on Facebook, um, of what sort of shocks and shackles and all that sort of stuff to run. It's all pretty confusing. Everyone's done different things. So I just want to show you guys. Um, so these are the Dobinsons I'm running. Um, hopefully you can see that there. Yes, yeah, so that's a part number there. Now I was told these are out of a 120 series Prado and they fit because with the 60s at the front, you need the bolt on the top and the eyelet down the bottom. Um, so that's those there. Now these are the shackles. I did paint them years ago. I'll probably have to touch them up one day, but anyway, they're greasable. Um, the two inch drop shackles, so that's what I've got in there at the moment. You can tell they're a lot smaller when compared to that one. Um, so I've got that in there, obviously I've got the shocks in there and that. I mean all this lift's done about probably 20,000 k's all up. Um, now I will just measure up um, the guard height for you guys, because I know some of you will probably want to know that too. Alright, so before this lift goes in, the um, guard measures at 965 millimeters from the ground to the center of the guard. Um, so we'll measure that after. The first thing I've done is place some stands underneath the chassis just to be safe. Um, the vehicle is in gear and the hair brakes on and the back wheels are chopped um, just to be safe. So we don't want anything going anywhere. The first thing I'm gonna do is loosen this um, top shock. So I'm gonna do that on both sides. Um, and then we'll get to jacking up and we might, I think we'll do one side at a time just, just to, um, make it a bit easier because it is sitting pretty high at the moment. So I've got those shocks both sides um, undone. So now I'll be uh, jacking it up from the bull bar underneath so that'll raise it up and I'll be able to undo the shackle and do one side at a time. Alright, so I stuffed around for ages there, um, and I just thought it'd be easier just to pull the other shackle out, um, just to drop everything down so it all comes down as one. Um, now I can get these shackles in, and I did have to add this block here. Um, I know it's not the best thing, but I am in my driveway trying to do it. Um, it's a good quality jack, but it just wouldn't go quite high enough. Um, I do have a high lift, but I don't really trust those going in here. It could fall over or something break, so I'd rather do this, and I do have the stands. They are underneath the chassis at the back. Okay, so now they're back in. Um, I'm going to do the final tightening on the ground, as you should always do lower the car down and do the final tightening. 
because if you tighten it when it's all the way up it will um, pinch the rubber and tear it possibly so you always want to do it on the ground so I nip it up nice and tight and I will be checking these after 10,000 k's and every service obviously because they are a big shackle and they these are um, a fair way from the eyelet point so they will move a little bit so I'll be double checking them this one um, and that fit in perfectly it hasn't been drilled out or anything before it was just a grandpa owner before so I doubt he would have drilled that out um, so I'll show you down the side here so they're in there um, I did struggle with that side a little bit but it went in once I'd figured out how to pull it out uh, it went in there easy now the sway bar I'm not sure with that uh, that's working fine at the moment but I know some people have made some sort of um, drop link or uh, like a uh, um, like where you remove it or something um, so I'll just see how that goes just for more flex or something but you now that shaft looks pretty good there I did have um, caster wedges fitted underneath the leaf springs or on top sorry um, when I got the wheel on it last time and they were negative four from memory so they should suit these shackles but I will be getting a wheel alignment again um, so the next thing to do we'll grease up these shackles and then um, we'll have to straighten the steering and that's it, we'll have to take it for a road test. Alright, so just before I grease those shackles up, I just want to measure these up for you guys. So we're reading... Um, 18 and Just on one metre there. So a thousand millimetres from the centre to the top of the guard. Now this will drop, um, after a couple of weeks of driving it will wear in and it'll drop again. But um, I'll give you guys an update of that anyway, but it does sit up bloody high. I didn't think it would sit this high, but it is nice. <laughs> So there's my EFS um, steering dampener there. As you can see, the boots um, perished and fallen off. It's it's about two years old, and as I said, the kit's done 20,000 k, so that's it's pretty poor quality. Um, and I believe it actually started perishing as soon as I put it on. Anyway, um, so my steering wheel is actually pretty pretty straight, and it will be getting a wheel alignment. But if you guys want to straighten your steering wheel, um, you just need to turn this bar here. So obviously, loosen that nut and that nut over there so you loosen those and straighten it that way you don't touch the bottom one that's for wheel alignment places to do that um, look I'm no expert so you guys always do all this sort of stuff at your own risk um, so yeah that's how you straighten that and you'll bring it back to center so. alright so just before it starts raining again I want to give you guys a quick walk around um, so this is obviously the 2H diesel um, so yeah washer cap I've got that on its way it's coming they are pretty common to break um, I'm going to tidy up some wiring on this battery here um, intake gasket I'm going to be doing that in a future video so you can see that's leaking I'll be hopefully bushing, putting a bush in that throttle pin there and doing the gasket um, and that's the second battery exhaust gasket so that's the Denco turbo kit so I need to get some new clamps and that but I'll do that in the future as I said guys I've been really busy with YouTube I do get um, 
two days off on the weekend and one day's with family and the other day's just doing YouTube full stop. So um, I don't get much time anymore. But I do enjoy filming and showing you guys what I'm up to. So I'll show you inside. Um, so that's inside. I've got the XR6 seats in here. They are okay. They do the job. Um, so I've got a touchscreen head unit in here. It is a double din. Now, when I looked at the unit, it had just the single din sort of back on it, but that was at the top. So I did modify it. I 3D printed some parts and made that work. Um, I have the 80 series pillar pod there. Um, so that works well. I've just got the dual volts at the top. I don't know if that's focused there. Dual bolts at the top, I've got EGT in the middle and boost at the bottom. This only runs 7 PSI boost, so nothing too crazy. Um, I have got the center console in here. I just whipped that up about two years ago. Um, and I've got to put in some cigarette sockets. They are wired, but I'll put a couple in there, so that's about it. Around the back, um, this is the rear bumper I made. Still going well. I've got to get the exhaust. I want to get that moved straight and dumped down uh, nice and tight up against the bumper so I'll get that done at some stage um, as you guys know this is the camper trailer that sits here in front of the garage so um, you can go check that out if you're new to the channel check that out a link above alrighty guys that's gonna be all for today's video um, that suspensions all done and in that looks great I'm really happy with that so last thing I'll do is just go for a quick drive and make sure it's all handling well and make sure that's doing well straight and then I'll just um, jump over those tensions on the underneath just on off camera um, yeah, so ask me any questions if you guys like to know anything more about that suspension or setup or where I got my parts from or anything like that. I'm more than happy to help. I know it's sort of confusing on some of the forums and all that about that sort of stuff. Um, I'll possibly have to raise the rear end a bit more in the future, but I'll, we'll see how that goes for now. I don't mind it sort of sitting a little, little bit lower in the back. Um, so there's going to be some future work coming. I will be doing um, upgrading this dual battery system. It's just got a um, 80 amp charger at the moment, so I'll be doing a 100 amp charger or a red arc um, And that'll have a push button for a jump start. So I'll show you guys that um, Obviously, we're going to do the intake gasket and exhaust gasket as I t mentioned before and there might even be a couple of other videos coming up We'll just see I'll mix those in with the camera trailer and I do have a future project But you guys will have to wait and see that in a couple of weeks um yeah, so jump over to Instagram for an inside scoop before YouTube. Um, and you can pick up some merch if you'd like. Thank you guys for all the love and support you've been giving me in the channel and the constructive criticism. I appreciate all of it. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything. And drop your thoughts and comments down below. And we'll see you in the next one.